Hello and welcome to another episode of RE7 Talks. Today with Cosmin again. Hello. Welcome Hello. again to our Hello. studio. Um, Thank glad, you for glad to me. have you here. And um, as discussed uh, the last time, we want to continue um, some insights with you from EcoMasters. Um, we want to look more into the topic um, conversion rate optimization. So um, the title of our podcast today is Are Your Visitors Converting? And Tips for Better Conversion Rates. So for our um, viewers and listeners today, can you explain a bit what is conversion rate optimization and why is it important? Yeah, definitely. Let's uh, maybe start with what is conversion rate first mm -hmm. and then <laughs> go to the optimization uh, part. Yeah. So we're talking about e-commerce here, right? Let's uh, step back and think about a normal shop, mm -hmm. like physical shop, right? Yeah. Like maybe maybe shops that, uh, that sell everything that we see in the movies from the American West, right? <laughs> everything uh, shops. <clears throat> yeah. A bit connected to Amazon because I think they have an everything shop uh, tagline. Um, so you have the number of people entering the shop, right? Mm -hmm. Actually entering, stepping in the shop. Then, from those people, some of them will buy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the ratio between how many people step in and how many people buy, that's your conversion rate, as simple as it gets. So, if you get 100 people stepping in the shop and two people buying, you have a 2% conversion rate. Mm -hmm. Now, this is simple enough, I think. Of yes, course, I think there is everybody more can understand it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but sometimes it seems like a crazy topic, conversion rate. What does it mean? No, it's as simple as that. It's people coming versus people buying. And uh, you have this, this metric, this uh, ratio. Of course, people coming means you have to do something. And that something could be online advertising or email marketing or some kind of engagement that makes people come, like a loyalty program. Mm -hmm. This comes with an effort and with a cost. So there is an effort to get people stepping in into your web shop. Then they come with an idea, they come with a desire, they come wanting something mm -hmm. and that want you need to fulfill in the shop. Yeah. And your ability to fulfill this want, which is also the promise that you made when you asked them to come, mm -hmm. that ability to, to, to fulfill this, it's the conversion rate optimization. Because if you make sure that what you promised is what they get, then mm -hmm. they buy more. But this is one aspect, and this is a very important aspect, the most important aspect. The other aspect is, let's call it, make it easy for them. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times it's not really a problem of not keeping the promise, but it's too complicated to buy online. Maybe in a mom and pop uh, store, That could be easy. I go in, I ask for a, or a, a pack of, uh, of rice or a, a spaghetti. Yeah. I get it, I pay, I go out. Yeah. But in a web shop, sometimes we make things too complicated or too confusing or too, yeah. the process is too long. Yeah, And I know I know what you mean. <laughs> I mean, especially, um, let me give you an example. I just wanted to buy a vacuum cleaner at Amazon. <laughs> It was two weeks ago. And there were so many products there. And even then when I found the product and the manufacturer I wanted to get, this manufacturers even had several products. And I couldn't clearly distinguish what's, what's the different, just by color. I could say that was the difference, <laughs> but the model name was different. So there must to be something different, but it was so unclear for me what was 
um, different. And I lost a lot of time, of course, investigating it, which was really frustrating. And it made the process, as you describe it, much harder for me to make a decision and to actually buy it. I know, I know what what you're saying, but let's yeah. let's build on that because this is a good uh, good topic. Mm -hmm. uh, just to tell our listeners, none of this is uh, pre-discussed, so we are jamming here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what can a retailer do in this case? Well, a very good solution, but not really used, is to to take over the conversation, as we call it. Instead of letting people just randomly choose search and find or search and don't find, to take over the conversation and say, okay, I see you looking for a vacuum cleaner. Let me ask mm -hmm. you three questions so I can recommend the, be the best vacuum cleaners for you. Yeah. And these questions are not crazy and they are not uh, difficult. Be why? Because in the vacuum cleaner category, for sure you have some kind of filters. Oh, like yes, how, I had I a lot of, yes, yeah. reviews, Cordless reviews, or not, price. reviews, price, brand. Uh, exactly. So yeah. you can transform these filters into questions and narrow down the selection of people, which is sometimes, for example, in vacuum cleaners, the selection is way too big. Just incidentally, I bought a vacuum cleaner for Black Friday, which was, let's say, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I started my journey trying to buy a, uh, a certain brand okay. and uh, then I, I couldn't really understand why would I pay so much for, uh, for uh, that, uh, that premium brand mm -hmm. and I ended up buying a half price uh, product which does everything the same basically. Sorry for being so blunt. Um, but somebody could have taken over our journey buying vacuum cleaners and say, let me guide you because I know vacuum cleaners. Um, let's make a, a little bit of split here because mm -hmm. this is important. There are two types of web shops, brand web shops and retailer web shops. So mm -hmm. brand web shops sell their own product. Let's take this uh, simple example, Dyson, right? Because Dyson is a very popular name in, uh, in vacuum cleaners and a premium brand. Yeah, um, I think they have their own web shop, right? I think you can uh, I buy. Think, I think they have, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't have uh, the 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 story <laughs> goes the same. Uh, uh, some other brand will uh, will for like sure. Bosch or like something Bosch, else. Yeah. yeah, indeed. So you have these shops, the brand shops, and you have the retailer shops. Now, quick question. <clears throat> What does the brand shop sell? It sells their product, their brand, right? Their own product that they own manufactured. Product. Exactly. Right. What does a retailer, a reseller sell? And this is a trick question. Okay. <laughs> I, In... I would have, what I would have said is um, it sells um, another brand or most of the time, several other brands from a certain product like vacuum cleaners not only dyson also probably bosch and mm -hmm. lots of other brands indeed and they might have some inter uh, commercial interest in selling <clears throat> one brand because they have better margins for example of course i mean yeah they would probably and they might notice better. guide you right they uh, they get you in a certain direction if they are smart mm -hmm. enough yeah Indeed. But uh, my opinion is the retailer is actually selling its own brand. And I'm not talking about private label. I'm talking by its own brand. So a retailer, Amazon, it's selling rather Amazon versus Dyson. Amazon is selling. Its interest is to buy from them. They do care somehow what you buy, but the most important thing is to buy from them, regardless of the brand. Yes. And this makes a big difference because when we start thinking that a brand shop sells their own brand, but the retailer also sells their own brand, but their brand is the web shop brand, is the Amazon.com, then you start thinking about conversion rate optimization in a, in a different way and you need to adapt it. 
to whatever it's uh, uh, whatever you are. Mm-hmm. Moving on. So people come, but where do they come actually? Where do they come to do to your webshop? Because they can come to a homepage, a category page, a product page, a blog post, various uh, places. Yeah, and, or the contact page. <laughs> <laughs> or the contact page, indeed. But you need to think about this because a lot of times retailers uh, think about uh, conversion rate in general. Okay, it doesn't really help. It, it has to be specific per uh, landing page. By landing page, I mean the page that people get to, not necessarily Ready the land, landing page land uh, on. per se. Mm-hmm. And also, I was just listening to a, a podcast uh, this morning about a guy buying uh, a Bluetooth speaker or some kind of uh, sound system for mm-hmm. home. And uh, he searched, uh, he found what he wanted, but he said, no, nah, it's too expensive. I'll wait. And he waited a while and it got into some kind of a Black Friday super discount and then he bought it. Mm-hmm. And if you think about this journey, he might come to the website 10 times and see uh, specification and compare products, but only one conversion. And that one conversion, it's also interesting to think about it from customer lifetime value. What does it happen after? Because you're not really buying uh, home uh, stereo or home uh, surround systems uh, every year even. So uh, the the retailer needs to consider this uh, this purchase cycle, also customer journey, so the steps taken to to get to the store, but also the purchase cycle. When will he or she buy again? So I was thinking, let's take a very narrow example. Um, And let's build on on this uh, uh, vacuum cleaner. So if you search on Google for, what did you search on Google? Vacuum cleaners? I went brand? directly, honestly, I went directly on Amazon. <laughs> oh, okay, and I, you did I what skipped, on Amazon I skipped, search? I skipped uh, Google search directly because, I mean, most of the products are at Amazon. So what I looked, what was for me important, I wanted to have a HEPA, HEPA filter. Okay. Um, like a special filter. So because I have right now, or I had a vacuum cleaner that made a lot of dust because the filter mm-hmm. was not properly. So my search was like vacuum cleaner with HEPA filter. That was the first search. That like I that. Vacuum mm-hmm. cleaner with HEPA filter mm-hmm. on Amazon. Yeah. And the search result uh, page, what the, did it look like? I didn't say something specifically about HEPA filter. It just brought me sponsored um, ads Mm -hmm. directly on Amazon. And then I saw the ones without um, like power, how do you say, power cable. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, this this is nice. Yeah, cordless. Mm -hmm. So I got dragged into this thing with cordless, you know, and there were some... By using filters. Yeah, and there were some brands mentioned that didn't tell me anything. So I just clicked on one because they had how much reviews? 5,000 reviews? 5,000 reviews, 4.7 or 4.8 out of 5. And it also said in this category, it's the bestseller. And then I clicked on that in order to inform myself more about the specific product. So I didn't use so much filters. It was the sponsored ads, and mm-hmm. then it was like the bestseller in this category vacuum cleaners, which Amazon shows you with a small orange thing. And I clicked on it. Do you happen to know how much uh, is a review nowadays on Amazon? How much do you pay to get it? I honestly, I honestly don't know how much it costs. Because you know, some of these reviews are not really uh, from. Uh people who bought the product. They were, uh, ah, bought. yes, yes. But I was like with 5,000 reviews, some of them must be true. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Okay, so uh, we talked about the um, uh, search result page, mm-hmm. which could also be a category page because they are both so-called listing pages. Uh, and how you can 
uh, optimize conversion there. So basically, uh, you have filters, which I think they are really important, but also the order of, of products, of the listing of the products, mm-hmm. uh, which was more important to you than the filters. Yeah, the filter, I mean, it, it it recognized directly when I put in vacuum cleaner, it needs to show me the filters for the category vacuum cleaners, which was a smart move. It was on the left to see. But for me, was more interesting the listing, how they listed it. Mm-hmm. A quick question for you, a bit on a tangent here. When you buy, you usually make an account, do an account, Uh, and log in or you buy as a guest normally i buy as a guest if possible i mean that's why i also said i prefer to buy at amazon because i have my account there it works smoothly i don't have to enter my data and so on so it saves me some time some hassle and most of the products i find there and you know what is one of the most important uh, elements of amazon webshop uh, success It's a one-click payment, right? Yes. So it just works, basically. You just get the confirmation page. <laughs> Your card yeah, has it's, been... It's like smoothless. It's, it's like a smoothless process. I had I had some shops where I had to enter some, some things. For example, especially when I buy as a company, a VAT ID. And mm-hmm. then this VAT ID wouldn't be recognized by the online shop. And then you have to write to the support in order to figure out how can you make an order. And this is this is a nightmare. I don't want to have this when I'm buying something. Indeed, because we are used with the convenience of Amazon. Yes, for example. Yeah. Indeed. So the th- second part of conversion rate optimization is removing barriers, basically making uh, things easy easy to find what we previously mm-hmm. discussed and then easy to buy by simple stuff and uh, we can think of uh, some some s- simple stuff like uh, birthday date for example who needs the birthday if he buys a vacuum cleaner for example <laughs> for, for alcohol it's a different story <laughs> but like to to fill out as little fields as needed for mm-hmm. the purchase to take place Indeed, indeed. So removing uh, barriers, which is which is important. But then uh, let's keep uh, digging because after you uh, saw the listing page, the search results page, you clicked on a product, and then you landed on a product detail page. Exactly. We also on need to optimize that, right? So that would be great. I want the relevant information on top like a summary, something like this, to get an Indeed. overview. If, if I know it's like the vacuum cleaner I was looking for, and in the summary I found then, it said something with HEPA filter. So I was like on the right path, you know? Mm-hmm. But store owners need to think about this journey because, for example, you might have opened uh, three tabs with three uh, vacuum cleaners, And sure. yeah. wanted a summary first to validate is this broadly what I need, but then for the one that you actually kind of decided to buy, you went deeper. You opened all the all the elements there to see does it really make a lot of noise? Does it have the HEPA filter? Does exactly it... so for me is also noise. Noise was was also important. And later on, I actually opened several tabs to compare. Yeah even though it was the same manufacturer <laughs> because yeah. there was not a comparison. But did you find the noise level? I found the noise level, but uh, funny enough, um, it's the same manufacturer. And I mean, that was the same one that was offering the same models. You could find on different sections on this product detail page, the information about the noise level. So they were different from each other. They were not the same. So it was for me a hassle to find where's the noise. Of course, you can search for it with DB decibel, but it was on different pages. So the structure of the product landing pages, even though it was the same product from the same manufacturer shop on Amazon were different, gave me some hassle because the information was structured differently. Indeed. And people think about the product detail page 
which usually comes from a uh, let's call it a database which which mm-hmm. we call it a, a, a PIM a product information management system which could be in your web shop uh, platform or could be uh, disconnected a separate one not to get too too technical but there is a place where all this product information is stored and enhanced and the information which i found also myself is not available so you need to search it for the for the noise which i yeah. really can't understand i guess for normal people <laughs> i dare to say for normal people noise level of a vacuum cleaner it's an important thing But depends. I mean, there are people that are not so noise effective like myself. So maybe they don't care. They want full power. I don't know. Uh-huh. Or maybe there are old people that don't hear so well, so they don't care at all. <laughs> they buy an industry vacuum cleaner because it makes <laughs> clean enough. I, I don't know. But yes, I would have considered the, the, the level of sound is important. Yeah. Yeah. And again, this is the thing that uh, somebody should think about. For example, we're doing now a uh, full documentation of uh, product catalog for one of our customers. And uh, it's always the case that people assume, store owners assume that it's easier than it is. And somehow in our, in our methodology, we start asking questions. And when you start asking questions, people start to understand that it's not so easy to document product and to create a product detail page that is relevant to, yeah. to, to your, uh, your uh, customer. So, uh, which other pages did you go through when you purchased? Um, yeah, so, I mean, home page, then... search result, product detail page, then you add it to basket, I'm guessing. Uh, no, it wasn't so easy. Of course, I had also to look for the Dyson because that was also came to my mind in order mm-hmm. to compare this famous Dyson brand. What does it so do so well? Mm-hmm. And I was astonished that it wasn't even so great as I thought from from the specs. Like the cheaper models had the same or even were more po- more powerful. Um, which I then sorted this already out as brand because it was not. I don't know why it's so high. It's probably because you pay for the brand. Um, it's the iPhone of uh, yeah, exactly. Cleaners. And yeah, and then I got uh, dragged into the comparison because, as I said, the manufacturer had different models, and they seemed for me all the same. And on one of the product landing pages, I found a comparison, which is awesome because then I can finally compare the different models. And after I had this comparison, of course. I had to discuss with my uh, girlfriend. Significant so other. here, here the session ended it because she said, "Okay, let's discuss tomorrow. I'm busy today." And then it came that on the next day we caught up with something. So two days later, hmm. I made a decision in for us that we buying this type of vacuum cleaner and ordered it. So I put it in the basket. Um, had to. Put, I mean, to choose the right address, not Germany, here in Romania. And then just um, confirm the order because they have my payment data, they have already my address, and that's it. Let's, uh, and they have, and you have your card saved already. So there's no yes, need yes. To, to enter card information. And they also have the possibility that you can pay at the end of the month. So you don't have to pay always the small amounts. They can send you an invoice at the end of each month. So if you buy lots of things during a month, you get one invoice, which is also yeah. Really this nice. is you. You are a premium customer. I just I'm just uh, buying and paying <laughs> for <laughs> everything. <laughs> But uh, uh, coming back, mm-hmm. let's talk a bit about reviews, reviews uh, and their uh, the influence on the. I check them. to buy or not. I, I check the reviews. And normally I'm starting that I'm checking the, the worst reviews to see what they're saying in order to see if there might be some truth in it. Also at Amazon, you see exactly the percentage, how many percentage had one mm-hmm. star, how many had two star. And the reviews, I mean, I find them helpful, 
Also sometimes there are some questions that you might ask. For example, mm -hmm. um, uh, this vacuum cleaner, this cordless vacuum cleaner, does it come with something that you can, like a power station that you can put mm -hmm. on the wall? Are the screws included? Some some things They that it not. might not say, you know? And uh, for, for, for me, was included, the, the yeah? screws. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, that's why also the reviews are really helpful. And other people might have the certain questions or the certain issues that you have. So it's kind of helpful to read this, even though they might be, as you said, already wrong. Or fake, fake, more, more fake, you know? Yeah. Uh, a different approach, just a quick side note here, a different approach is uh, that I seen somewhere and I liked is not to look at the reviews with one star, but uh, or look on the reviews with two stars, because one star are really furious people. So, and most of the time, yes. In Romania, I agree with you. I don't <laughs> look at the one review. In Germany, it sometimes works uh, to look at the one review. They are not so furious because you can send things back. So there's Indeed. not so much so much issues like in Romania where you have to pay when you send things back. Indeed. Now, everything that we discuss here, and I think uh, we're uh, we're getting uh, closer to the to the finish of our talk. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do on this conversational level that we have, and it's fine. But if you really want to implement it, if you really want to optimize your conversion rate then you need a structured approach. And this structured approach comes with a checklist. For example, in our agency, we have a 450 criteria checklist in order to optimize conversion rate. This is really, really uh, structured and important versus just a, a discussion or just opinions or just uh, how would I like it. And this checklist is really important because it sets the foundation, the basis of your conversion rate. It's kind of like the it, it gives you it makes an audit probably of your online shops and it gives you an audit on conversion rate optimization for your online shop. An overall Indeed. audit, I guess. A full audit, 360 degrees audit. But Uh, uh, just very important to mention, it's only from customer perspective. We don't really care about what happens in the webshop company itself. We don't even ask access to the backend. We just see what happens. What the customer buy sees. What the customer sees. We buy stuff. We get it delivered. Uh, mystery shopping. Uh, we return stuff. We call the call center. So We take the full experience, and usually it's a big team, so we have different angles, um, and we see crazy stuff. So things are really not working properly in almost all, no, I mean, for sure, in all the web shops, we find things to be improved. I'm of of to course, be with 450 questions, you find yes. always something, but... Always something, but sometimes we find things that are really bad. For example, I had a product which has a discount, I add it to cart from product detail page and in the checkout, it has a different discount and a, so a different price. So this is totally unacceptable and I think it's also illegal. So it's, uh, it's really a, a bad thing to, to have. But this is just, a, just a, an extreme I can example. Also, I can also give you an example. I mean, we do, we do when we do PPC or something, we, we check, of course, also, but not as deep as you guys. And what that we figured out was like um, on desktop, everything was working smooth and well, but on responsive with the phone, it's another journey. And they had a chatbot and the chatbot was covering the I want to buy button. So you couldn't buy anything online with your mobile phone because there was the chat button and you couldn't click it away. <laughs> so it was covering the buy button. And the customer was complaining. He worked with two, three agencies before and the conversion rate was so low and didn't know what to do. And then we told this to them and they were like, oh, we haven't, we haven't seen just, this. Yeah. Don't do stupid, basically. <laughs> yes. And this is, and this is only the iceberg, as I said. So, mm -hmm. um, That's, that's why it's valuable uh, to do a proper audit with you and then to do PPC 
with us because before it, it it's like it's necessary in order to have a smooth way also when you have like from SEO coming clients that just want to buy because then you can't also track this. But especially when you spend money in Google, TikTok or um, Meta, it's important first to have your shop set and that you do this conversion rate optimization. So you you know for sure it works when somebody comes in your shop and you don't can't press the, the buy button or you get a different discount. Exactly, because otherwise you're just wasting money on uh, getting traffic that doesn't convert. So first thing you do, first thing you do is optimize conversion rate. Then yeah. everything else. I think we summarized it really well, how to do it. Um, if people want to get in contact with you in order to get a conversion rate optimization audit, I think they can come on your website, ecomasters.net, or contact you directly via LinkedIn. Perfect. The, the best two methods, ecomasters.net, we have a contact form and uh, we will reply really quick or contact me directly on LinkedIn. It, these are the best, uh, best ways to get in touch and to increase your conversion rate. Awesome. Thank you very much, Cosmin. Was again you. a nice insight. And for the viewers and listeners, please leave in your comment what vacuum cleaner are you using? <laughs> <laughs> and maybe we might we might tell you what we bought at the end. Um, thank you and have a nice day. And see you in one of our next shows. Thanks. Cheers. Bye.